he was he was badass. He was awesome. I mean, the fact that he could com- uh, keep composure and sit there and, uh, and work through that and not flip out was just amazing. And that's one of the things I loved about him. And then, uh, you know, years down the road, you know, we stay in contact over the years. He writes a book, puts me in it, uh, did a whole uh, Dan Rather's hour-long special with me in it, uh, wrote about me in GQ and some other stuff. So him and I had a really good friendship. And then uh, he sends me this, you know, really random panicked email out of nowhere that is, was just very unlike him. His Homeland Security's after me. Oh, my God. You go to his funeral. His wife says, oh, we're going to stop him. Then she goes on Pierce Morgan and says, everything's fine. It's totally normal. His car blew up. Yeah, they blew him up. And he, he went on TV on the Young Turks two days before and said, the government's been taken over. We've got to fight it. Obama's part of it. So are the Republicans. It's tyranny. We're at war. Fight him. I'm about to release key info. Boom. What do you think he had learned? We, do, we still don't know. Well, there's a number of things. You know, Michael Hastings was one of those guys who was working on not just one big story. He was working on a number of things. And uh, one of the things he was working on was a uh, thing on John Brennan, from what I've heard. Uh, John Brennan was uh, given the task to, uh, to uh, I'm trying to remember the term, uh, whitewash or clean off uh, Obama's passport, uh, the proof of where he's been and things like that. And uh, he was well, beyond that, he tells that. us that the NSA doesn't spy on us. Right. Yeah. And he was looking into a, a number of different things as well. And uh, he had already been, you know, uh, threatened by General McChrystal and his uh, crew for writing the uh, piece he did, uh, the runaway general or the rogue general. And, and, yeah, uh, and that's what really made him mad on McChrystal. And then I had a guy on who was a, uh, a Marine Corps captain. And he'd become a colonel, but devoted to captain. He was an African-American guy up in Dallas. And I, this guy would call and thought he was nuts and later learned who he was and thought, wow, Colonel Six. He was saying, we're about to bring down McChrystal. And by the way, you're going to see it. And then it came out months later. And he died the day it came out. So then I was talking to multiple people that have died around this McChrystal thing. And I was like, okay, Colonel Six would give you some good stuff. He called the office and he later sent his ID and stuff that he was this Marine Corps colonel. Yeah, I remember when he used to call in. You remember? They killed that guy. Yeah. Well, you yeah. got to think, though, too. He killed him. He was like 45. He fired. McChrystal was running the war in Afghanistan. So so, so what, when, what is it about McChrystal that they, Colonel Six dies, well, here, Hastings blows up. We're going to go back to Richard in a minute, but I'm going to come back to you. But, yeah, there was something big here. Here's the thing, though. when You don't just get a general fired. That's his entire cabinet. When him rising to the ranks as general, he's had the same people by his side day in and day out for years and years on end. When he gets fired, it's not just him getting fired. There's other guys, there's other assets, there's other people who uh, are other, uh, other government agency entities that are attached to them that lose their jobs too, their livelihoods. It's a whole empire. They take that personal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly, it's exactly what it is. So it's not one man going down, it's a whole bunch of people, and you're going to have some in there that have the know-how how to kill, that have the know-how to, how to use drones, that have the know-how to, to, to use explosives and do all these different tactics, and you're going to get one guy out there who's going to get extremely butt hurt and get upset and maybe do something. And all we know is there's a really good man who is no longer alive because he reported the truth and he was killed for it. And now we segue to Megyn Kelly, and we're going to come back to you, but and then our other reporters. But Megyn Kelly had you on others. They all made a big joke out of it. Uh, it looks like Justin Timberlake and Ellen met each other and put on earrings. <laughs> so you agree with me that it may actually be Caitlyn Jenner's daughter? Uh, no, it's Bruce Jinder. All right, well, we're having some fun here. We've got Richard Reeves with a bunch of veterans here. We're going to come back to you. we got Leanne McAdoo, Jakari Jackson, myself, the whole great crew who've been up here since like 10 a.m. this morning, busting their booties. I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, with a live transmission. Uh, but it's already 10.05 Central or 10.03 Central right now. Let's go back to Iowa uh, at Drake University and there with Donald Trump uh, really dominating, taking over the whole debate. Richard Reeves. Yes, sir. Thank you, Alex. It's Richard Reeves once again. And, sir, what is your name? Uh, Grant Gardner. Grant Gardner. Tell us, uh, you were giving us some information about the coxing. Tell us a little bit more how about, about how coxing works here in Iowa. Uh, the, the caucus is the elementary you know, form of government. You know, it's where everybody gets a chance to have their say-so that if they want to. You know, and just the process... Some have made it sound like it's really complicated, but it's really quite simple. Uh, you sign in, uh, make sure everybody's registered, uh, 
And so those rumors about this going to take hours and hours and hours. That's that's really a something to what try does to he make of Microsoft? What does he make of Absolutely. Microsoft taking it over? Yeah, that's exactly what they're trying to do. Um, I'm hoping in my caucus that we'll be able to be out of there within an hour, an hour and a half. That's what's Have scary, Richard. It's usually really quick. Now they're claiming, right. oh, wait, we're going to give you the answer from right. Microsoft and Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yeah. Right. Have you heard about that uh, Microsoft is going to be doing some of the collating of the numbers of the caucuses? Have you heard about that? No, I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Well, there's a concern that they could uh, kind of put their thumb on the scale and change those numbers around. So uh, I think a lot of Iowans are concerned. So are you going to, is that something you're going to look into? Uh, for my part, you know, we've got a, I've got a special app on my cell phone and also on my uh, uh, tablet. And when, as soon as we take the, the straw vote is completed and counted, yeah, you know, I'll get on that app and send that information that's immediately the to app. our home office in Des Moines. Yeah, that's the Microsoft so, app. Is that the Microsoft but app? That may be the Microsoft app, but that's what you can do, what what Alex, I believe what he'll be able to do is you will actually know the exact votes. You guys go up to the front of the room when you get these three by five index cards. It's a secret ballot. People write down the name of the candidate, and then they go up to the front, and there's at least five precinct officials that witness the counting of the votes. Is that correct? Each, each candidate uh, can have one representative witness the count. Okay, so there could be, you know, 10 or 15 people up there in front. So there's going to be minimum five. All right, Richard. Seven or eight. Richard, yes. talk to some of these ladies, and then I want you to wander around okay. and talk to folks. This is pretty okay. exciting reporting. I want to go for another hour. I've got to come on at 11. I would go forever, but I want to turn this loose soon and let you guys take over because here's the deal. I talked to Leanne behind the scenes, Jakari, and, and my writers are just basic crew. and They're smarter than I am. They get on air. They're all polite. They're nice. They let me run around like a crazy gorilla. Uh, I really want to hear like long five-minute comments from Jakari and, 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 and Leanne and people on the street. And where's McBrain? That guy is so smart in private, and then he doesn't want to ever go on air. I'm He's back here. Good, good, McBrain. Hey, I want to. I want to hear from you for a moment, and then, and then I'm punching out. Not because I don't want to be here, because I'll stay here until 3 a.m. Let's go to 11. Another you guys have another 50 minutes is good. Good for that. Kit and I, Kit and I were Jakari, playing musical up? chairs. No, no, I, I love you, McBrain. You're awesome. Uh, we're good for that. But Jakari is now going to take over. Be the traffic cock uh, with with Leanne McAdoo. I, in the interest of uh, letting folks here, you know, get some front bench starting time. I'm going to go because I'm on at 11 a.m. Central tomorrow. Please support InfoWars.com. We're going to be, I'll be honest, I'm going to, while I'm driving home, I'm going to be calling into the hotline. I'm going to go spend 10 minutes looking at all the polls and numbers to give some real analysis. And then I'm going to be calling in and just great job, the crew and the people behind the scenes that have busted their butts. I barely have a crew to run all this. We're trying to get enough money to hire a couple more editors and live switchers so that people get vacations or folks don't work 18 hours when we do special events. Because we're going to start doing more and more coverage more and more of big events, and it's amazing to know that sometimes we do this and 3 million people tune in, sometimes it's 500,000, 100, whatever. It's big. I mean, what is that like, Jakari, to be able to reach this many people? Is that not amazing? Yeah, I mean, it is um, quite something to see the, op the way the operation has grown since I've been here. Uh, several hundred thousand more people join you on YouTube. I think when I came here, you had about 300,000 or so, now you got over a million. You know, so it just, that's just on one channel. Yeah, that's just Subscribers. On one yeah. That's yeah. subscribers, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the metrics back there on like Facebook and everything, it's billions every few months. I mean, the, you know, that we reach. It, it is insane. Uh, Leanne McAdoo, I'm going to punch out, let you guys take over here. While we're doing that, we're going to cut back and then Richard's going to walk through the crowd and talk to folks. So you comment, Jakari, Leanne comments while we, you know, basically cover all this. And then I want to go back to Richard to talk to some folks, then back to Joe Biggs, back to Darren McBreen and others. But great job. Uh, this has been a fun debate. I've not been here for the other debates. I used to do it before you were here. Is it fun to have you for the debate, or you rather David Knight? Uh, you guys both bring something different to it. Is it more analysis? Yours is, I mean, you throw an analysis too. Screaming but that she's a tranny. Yeah, right. you do stuff like that. <laughs> so Gotta have a little, so a little different. Well, they're teaching five-year-olds out in school, so I might as well make a joke out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Be honest. Do you think we're going to win the info war, Jakari? I think we're going to do the best we can, and uh, it's going to take a lot of people beyond us. I guess that's the best way to say it. it. It depends on how many people decide to get involved. Well, I want to say something, Jakari. I, I, it is so awesome that you took the job here, that you won that contest, and it was 10 times better than I thought, and same thing with Leanne and, and McBreen and all the crew. I just, 
I just working with you guys, seeing you develop everything you do. I'm, I'm sorry to do this. I just have to say, it is so much fun to work with you guys. And and Infowars is such a special place. I mean, it really is original. It's different. And you folks out there made it by spreading the word, by buying the products, by supporting our sponsors. Thank you, viewers. One of our newest additions. What three, four months here, Zimmerman? And my Michael Zimmerman kicking ass. I mean, it's just amazing. <laughs> So uh, we're going to let you guys, Jakar, you take over. Uh, and I guess go ahead and what do you want to do? You want to go to, uh, you want to go to uh, Reeves well, first? You want to go? Finish up go. since they're standing there. Yeah, if he's ready to go, yeah, let's go ahead. And All right, Reeves, you take over, walk through the crowd. Reeves, give us your take on what you saw tonight, then take us to the crowd. Go ahead. Well, what I saw tonight was a, a media zoo, and uh, we've got this ge gentleman here, veteran here, that's been, uh, he's uh, had a really long night. So final words from you, sir. It's been a great night, and Donald Trump is the very greatest. He's the only candidate, in my opinion, that can make America great again. And I say, go Trump. And if you're in Iowa watching this, go caucus Monday night and, and caucus for Trump. And may God bless this great nation of America. All right. Well, thank you for your service, sir. We really appreciate it. And you take care. Thank Have you. a good night. All right, we've got a couple of other folks here that uh, they've never been to a caucus here. And these are new caucus goers. This is a lady, actually, I happened to see her over in Iowa City a while back. Ma'am, what's your name again? My name is Karen Demore. Hi, Karen. And your daughter? Elise. Elise? Elise. All right, so this is your first time coxing, so you're really ready. This is something that finally it's like, hey, this is important enough. I'm going to get out there and do this. Yeah, I heard recently that a lot of people, uh, it's their first time to caucus, so I thought that was very interesting that I, out of the blue, decided to do that as well, and I, I really didn't know. I was in Iowa City on Tuesday night for the rally, and they were encouraging people to, to sign up, so I went and I filled out the card, and um, so yeah, I'll be doing my first caucus on Monday. Well, it is a pretty simple process. Uh, basically, like the gentleman was saying earlier, is you get there at 6 p.m. here in Iowa, and but they close the doors at 7, is my understanding is 7 p.m., they close the doors, so if you get there late, you're not going to get in, so you need to be there in time to caucus, and then, uh, like I say, they have some housekeeping items, they elect officers and things like that. And like that gentleman just told us a little while ago, you could have up to 10 or 15 people that are witnessing these slips of paper. So uh, w earlier we were talking about the Microsoft issue. Have you heard anything about that? Have you looked into that at all? I did hear about uh, Microsoft, and I, I saw a little bit of information on TV about it, so I'm not concerned that there's, it's going to be tipped in any way. I think, actually, it's just going to expedite uh, finding out the results. All right, well, thank well, see, you so much, what, Richard. Uh, we're going to move okay. around to some of our other reporters, but, uh, of course, continue with what you're doing. We'll check back with you before we, we sign off here. Okay, Jakari, thank you. All right, thank you so much, Richard. All right, so there goes Richard Reeves, I believe. Oh, there we go. We got Darren McBreen and Alex Jones in the studio. How did that happen? Look I'm back. It. He's back. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm going to listen to you guys on the free iPhone app as I drive home. I love you all. Great job. Give me the hotline number. I'll be calling in. Sorry, Jukari. Go back to what you were saying. <laughs> all right, and there goes Alex Jones. Look at that Alex studio. Jones That's has left that is a the quite building. A shot. Yeah, that you can see uh, all the great crew out there working overtime. Many of the guys get here pretty early in the morning, uh, whoop, start whoop. on the radio show. So some of the radio crew still there as well as the nightly news. Crew. Now, I know Kit was at the Twitter station at one point. Is he still out there? Negative. Okay, so Kit is uh, taking the powder, as it were. So uh, I think this is a good time to kind of rehash on. what's going on. Or did you have something to say, Marcos? Biggs. Yeah. Wait, we still have Biggs on the okay, line. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Joe Biggs. All right, so Joe Biggs, uh, you're still out there uh, in Oregon in your hotel room. So you were telling us about Megyn Kelly and uh, pretty much your experience with that. Were you finished with that story, or was there more to it? Yeah, but I mean, I was just listening to Richard and how they're talking about Monday is going to be a big caucus. So hopefully everyone shows up for that big caucus and uh, they enjoy that. But uh, outside of that, yeah, Megyn Kelly is definitely a, a pretty uh, mean person. And uh, not really, uh, I don't like her too much. But other than that, I've been enjoying everything. The uh, debate tonight has been interesting. Uh, I actually just uh, read some polls. Now that you take Trump away from the... Uh, the Trump circus away from the actual debate. Rand Paul has been leading in the numbers thus far and is continuing uh, to do so throughout the night, which is pretty awesome to see him. He's actually got a chance to uh, not be overshadowed by the uh, the mass parade that goes on that is Trump. And uh, everyone gets a chance to actually really speak without uh, 
you know, the uh, mainstream media's main focus on attacking uh, Trump or getting the other candidates 